What's up guys, Dan here, Coal Cracker Bushcraft. So I am out today with my son Jax and we are playing with our new toy, which one of my instructors, Chuck, one of my good friends, Chuck, good old Chucky, found for me and that's a smooth bore 20 gauge flintlock. So really fun and exciting. You never got to shoot a flintlock, I definitely say. Find somebody with one, you'll have a good time with it. But um, this video is not about the flintlock per se, but it is a little bit about some of the stuff that you use when you're shooting your flintlock, and that is specifically black powder, and that the flintlock throws a spark the same as our flint and steel kit. So we all love flint and steel fires, and if you've never seen a flint and steel fire, you gotta go back and watch, you're not watching enough coal cracker, because we love flint and steel around here and those sparks. But here's the thing, when it comes to flint and steel, okay, I tell people all the time that this stuff is like, like not, it can be used for emergency fire starting, but always pack extra emergency fire starting gear. Because there's a bunch of different things that happen here. When you make your char cloth, it works really, really well, but if it gets very damp and humid and there's a lot of moisture in the air or it gets exposed to too much wetness, then it yields not too good. So what are you gonna do then? Well, hopefully you have a backup fire starter, but today what we're gonna do is we're gonna make something called rub cloth and that is a mixture of some of these elements and some of these elements and then you will always have a way to start a fire with your flint and steel even if your char cloth gets damp and wet and seems useless okay so onward and upward what you're gonna need for this project is some of the cloth that you would generally use to make char cloth but you don't want it charred you just want the plain old cotton material now what you're gonna do is you're also going to grab your good old water bottle. You're gonna need a little bit of water for this, or you can just use a stream or a puddle, any of that will work. And then this is the one thing that you might not have, but you need to get, um, and that is some black powder. So you're gonna to need to get some black powder. Now black powder you can buy at sporting goods stores and um, flintlock muzzle loader shops. So you are gonna to have to go out and get some of this, but um, even if you're not a shooter, you can go get this and make this stuff and it's pretty cool. Okay, so we have a piece of our white cotton. I have jacks over here. What I'm gonna do then is we're gonna get that a little bit wet. Okay, so just damp cloth, just like that. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take some of the black powder and you're going to just give it a good sprinkling over the top. And that's why we have Jack's here. He's gonna rub this in real good. So grind that in with your fingers there. Okay, not that much grinding, just a little bit. Just rub it in, just like this, okay? We just wanna get the uh, material covered with the gunpowder, okay? And then what we're gonna do, once that's done, just like this, okay, is we're gonna make sure that the other side, if there's anything that we can squeeze onto that, Okay, go ahead, you get that on there. We're gonna get that on there, and then once that's done, okay, we're gonna just let this air dry. So it's gonna take a little while to air dry. Once it's totally dry, your rub cloth is totally finished off. Okay, so our rub cloth is all dry at this point and ready to go. So if it's nice and dry feeling, you can put it away with your char cloth until you need it for more of an emergency style fire. Now, while this is drying, if you see like bigger clumps of black powder on there, by all means, you can rub that in and it'll dissipate and work itself into the cloth. If you let them on there, it's not a problem either, but they'll probably flake off um, as the stuff dries out, okay? Now, when you put this in with your char cloth, be sure to not use this the same as you would normally use char cloth. And what I mean by that is, when you get your flint and steel out, we normally place the char cloth on the stone itself, and then we strike the stone like this with our striker, throwing the sparks onto the piece of char cloth. Then we can handle the char cloth, we can put it in a bird's nest and do all that good stuff. With rub cloth, on the other hand though, when this gets a spark, it actually it like fizzes up and bursts into flames, which you're gonna see here in a minute. So when we ignite this, we're gonna hold the striker downward and then we are gonna strike our stone like this, throwing sparks downward into the bird's nest that has the rub cloth. So when the rub cloth ignites, it's right there. We just pick up the whole bird's nest and we're good to go. All right guys, so here is our rub cloth. Now what we're gonna do, of course, is throw the sparks downward on it. It is gonna flame up and We'll be good to go. So 
So you can see with that, at this point, after all that flame, it is still like char cloth. So it's still embering up. So if that wasn't a wet bird's nest, that'll help dry it out. And then we can start adding our oxygen to it. We have a nice burning piece of char cloth afterwards. And there you go, and just like that, that is how you make and you ignite rub cloth. Very easy, fun process, and it's a great addition to that flint and steel kit. You put it in the back, you forget about it until you totally need it, or until you run out of char cloth, and then you realize, I don't have a way to make a fire to make more char. Well, yes you do, because you're gonna get out your rub cloth. So, um, very fun project. Definitely give this one a shot. So if you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe down below. Also, check us out over at coldcrackerbushcraft.com for all of our classes and our merchandise and all that cool stuff, and if you don't have a good flint and steel kit we got them for you so check that out too and then uh have fun with the outdoors and until the next video stay in the woods